Hello guys, it's Johnny Time and welcome to another Solidity and Smart Contract Hacking tutorial. Today we're gonna solve the third then vulnerable DeFi challenge, which is the Truster. This is one of the best challenges, capture the flags, in order to master smart contract hackings. And I highly recommend you to try to solve these challenges. And if you are stuck or you want to figure out how to solve them, you can always watch my series of videos of the walkthrough of them vulnerable DeFi. And if you like to get exposed to more smart contract hacking and solidity hacking tutorials, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell button. Now, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so this challenge is also about flash loans and flash lending pools. And we can read here that more and more lending pools are offering flash loans. In this case, there is a new pool that was launched and it's offering flash loans for DVT tokens. Now, the previous act exercises was Ether. In this exercise, there is a DVD token and this pool offer flash loans. Currently, the pool has 1 million DVD tokens in balance and you have nothing, but don't worry, you might be able to take them all from the pool in a single transaction. So our goal over here is to steal all the DVD tokens from the lending pool that offer flash loans, even though we have zero tokens, zero DVD tokens. So let's see how we can do that. So the first thing that we want to go to do is check the JavaScript file because this is the file that does all the setup, all the, the exploitation that we have to implement and then the checks later on that the exploitation was successful. So here we can see the Truster test file where all the setup is being done. You can see like it was described in the exercise, there are 1 million tokens in the pool. They will be sent later on over here to the pool after deployment of the pool and the token smart contract, quite obvious, some tests. Here is the exploitation section where we have to write our exploit and eventually all the checks that the exploit was successful that the attacker has the pool tokens and the pool has zero tokens. Quite obvious, quite straightforward. Now we want to check out the smart contract and see how we can exploit it. So by going to trusterlenderpool.sol, we can see that it's a updated Solidity 5. It imports the interface of ERC20, address and re-entry guard. You can see that it, it, it inherits from re-entry guard and it defines the token basically because it's gonna use the token. So in the constructor, we get the token address and define the done valuable token by wrapping it up with the the interface of the ERC20. And this is the function that we probably, we have only one function, so this is probably the function that we need to exploit. It's a flash loan external non reentry function, which means we can access it from external. There is no like any ownership checks and it gets integer borrow amount, address borrower, target address and bytes call data, why a flash loan function gets a target and a call, a data, which is, it's interesting. So let's see what it, what it does. First, it checks the balance before, okay? So it checks the balance of this pool address, the address of this, of the damn valuable token by calling the ERC20 function, the base, the default function of balance off. Then it checks that we have more balance than the amount that the user tried to borrow, makes sense. Then, Obviously, it transfers the tokens to the borrower, the tokens that it asks, he asks to borrow. Then it calls target.function call with data. Why? Very weird. Okay, so it basically the flash loan calls the target. The target is, you have to remember, it's input that is controlled by the user. Anyone can call the flash loan with any target and any data that it wants. And it calls target.functioncall.data. This is basically lets the user execute any function on any smart contract that he ever wants on behalf of this trusted lender pool smart contract, which is very interesting. So if you have the attacker mindset, you already see something odd here. So either if you are, you are doing smart contract auditing or you're just doing bug bounties, when you see that there is a smart contract that lets you execute any function from any other smart contract on behalf of this smart contract, it's, it's abnormal, it's not normal. And then it checks that eventually after the function call, the balance after and 
the balance after it checks what is the balance after and make sure that the balance after is greater or equal than the balance before which is usually how flange loans are implemented they lend the tokens to the borrower and then eventually they check at the end of the function that the balance that they have after so the borrower paid back the loan so the balance is e either equal or higher than what it was before all the send and all the execution but this kind of thing looks suspicious and now we're gonna think how we can hack this kind of thing so if you want i highly recommend it to try to solve it by yourself but if you want to see the solution we're gonna do it right now so we can make the Truster lender pool smart contract to call any function that we want. Now you try to think what kind of function we want the truster lender pool smart contract, what kind of function we want to execute on his behalf so you can some kind, I don't know, implant a backdoor or something that will let us steal all the tokens later on. Try to think before you see the solution. I want you to to practice like thinking like hackers, like 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 exploiting smart contracts the thing is that we cannot steal the money the tokens in the same function in the same target function call functionality so if we just transfer the tokens it won't work because later on it will check that the balance after is will be lower than the balance before right because before it was 1 million and after it will be zero because we're gonna steal all the tokens and so it's it's a problematic because the transaction will be reverted because of this require over here so we need to implement some kind of vector that will later on allow us to steal all the tokens do you have any idea what we can do all right so you're absolutely right we're gonna use the approve function we're gonna basically approve to us to the attacker to spend the tokens of the landing pool smart contract as you know you probably know in ERC20 tokens we have the whole approval system where we, you can approve some other address to spend your tokens on your behalf okay you can do it by uh, calling the approve function and you specify the spender and how much you allow to to allow him to spend your tokens and then you can check who can spend your tokens by calling the allowance function so that's how it works and we want to implement this kind of backdoor in the smart contract so we need somehow to make this truster lending pool approve unlimited spending for the dvd tokens for us and we're gonna implement it using a smart contract because we have to implement it using a smart contract because this kind of target function called data it gets an address and a data so we need to implement our own smart contract now let's see how we can make it so we're gonna create a new smart contract here we'll call it truster attacker dot sol okay we're gonna define the solidity i'm just gonna copy here some basic line of codes that will be just the same for example the solidity version the interface of the erc20 tokens and then we want to define the interface to interact with the pool so we call it i pool because we need from our smart contract to interact with the landing pool to execute the flash loan attack so we need to write the interface so we're gonna take these kind of lines and copy it over here and this is the function i'm just gonna remove all the spaces they are not necessary and let's go guys i wanted to share with you something super exciting and new i've created a complete practical smart contract hacking course accumulating 12 years of my cybersecurity and blockchain experience without exaggerating this is your holy grail all-in-one course which will instantly help you kickstart your career in smart contract hacking and security making you the most demanded professional with insanely high salaries get exposed to tons of knowledge by signing up in the description below so now that we have defined the interface we need to start writing a smart contract let's contract contract truster attacker and that's it we don't need to inherit for anything else we have the uh, we need to uh, what kind of variables we need we need the variable of the original pool that we want to exploit so we will call it i pool because we don't need to change it and then pool not pool pool and we're gonna define the constructor on the constructor we'll get address and pool address and we're gonna set the pool equals to i pool and pool address we also want to define the attacker address so we're gonna do something like that we're gonna do address private attacker 
and we're gonna set it attacker equals message dot sender sender the autocorrect is horrible. Now we want to create the attack function. All the function that will have all the logic that will exploit the landing pool smart contract. So we're gonna define it function attack. Okay, it's not gonna get anything because it doesn't need anything. So it won't get any parameters. It will be external, and that's it. That's basically it. Now I highly recommend you before implementing the function, try to plan it. What what logic you want to execute? So the first logic we want to approve unlimited spending of pool, right? This is the first thing we want to do. The thing, the second thing we want to do is basically, um, we want to approve it through flash loan, right? The, the, the vulnerability that we found on the flash loan. So this is how we're going to exploit it, flash loan. The second thing we want to do is basically send all the tokens from the pool to the attacker. This is what we want to do, okay? Quite simple to this kind of functionalities. Now we want to implement them. So the data that we're gonna send to the smart contract, to the landing pool smart contract, it needs to be in bytes format. So we're gonna define it, uh, bytes memory data, and we need to use the abi.encode with signature. So we're gonna encode basically the function. So if you go to the docs of the ERC20, the documentation, you can see that the approval function gets an address, the spender, and then the integer demand. So this is exactly what we need to define over here. Prove address and uint. All right. So make always, always make sure when you write this kind of encode with signature functions, when you encode functions into bytecode, you need to, de to define the functions. And a lot of common mistake is that people forget here that there is a space, they, they put a space and it won't work because the, the, the bytecodes of the function will not work. So you need to make sure that there is no space here in the parameters. This is very important. Now we need to specify the parameters. The parameters is gonna be first the address of this smart contract, okay? The amount, we want to make sure that the amount is unlimited. So we're gonna do something like two in power of two, five, six, minus one. So it's basically the maximum number minus one, the maximum of you unsigned each 256. Um, so it's like a very, very big number, okay? Now we will want to call the flash loan function, the vulnerable function that this code will be executed on behalf of the trust or lender pool. So we're gonna do something like pool.flashloan, and then we need to specify the parameters. How much do we want to borrow? Nothing, right? Because we don't want to borrow actually anything. We just want it to execute the code. And that will be um, address this. Now, the first, the next parameter will be target. Who will be the target that we want to execute this kind of logic, this approval? And the target is the ERC20 tokens because we want, this is a function, the approve function is a function that exists in the smart contract of the DVT token, the ERC20 token. So we want to specify here the token address. So this is something that I forgot. We need to edit here, address, and we'll call it token address. And we want to add another variable here. We'll call it IELC ERC20. And it will be immutable and we'll call it token. And then here we're gonna put um, token equals IERC20 token address. Okay, so this is just something that I forgot. We're gonna send it in the constructor already the token address. <laughs> and then the address is gonna be address and token. All right. So then the data obviously going to be this kind of data and that's, that's supposed to be it. Okay. Now the next logic that we want to implement is sending all the tokens from the pool balance to the attackers. Now we need to check how much balance the pool actually has. Even though we know that there are 1 million tokens in the pool, we want to make sure that our smart contract will drain all the tokens. Maybe in other cases it will have different money. So we don't want to specify the amount or to make it hard coded, but we want to check real time actually how many tokens there are so we can steal them all in that case. We can do it by using the, the balance of function of the ERC20 token. So this is the function balance off. It gets an address. That's exactly what we're going to do. So we'll do uint balance and we will do a token dot balance off and the address will be address of pool. Now that we have the approval and we have the, the balance, we want to send all the tokens on behalf of the 
the pool from the pool to our attacker. So we can use the function transfer form. Transfer form is the exact function that we are looking for. It gets the sender, the recipient, and the amount. So we're gonna do token dot transfer transfer form and it automatically completes it for me. So the sender is gonna be the address of the pool. The recipient is gonna be the attacker and attacker and the amount is gonna be the balance that we just got. That's it guys, super simple. We implemented a smart contract from scratch, the attacking malicious contract, and now it's time to deploy it and execute the attack. So now the deployment is quite simple. We just need to deploy the smart contract attacker and then call the attack function. And we are supposed to have all the tokens from the pool to the attacker. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna copy this kind of line of code. We'll call it const uh, attacker. And then we need to specify the smart contract name, which is the truster attacker. And we'll deploy it as the attacker, obviously. And that's it. And now we need to deploy it, right? This is just the factory. So we're gonna do um, const attacker equals to attacker factory dot deploy. I'm just gonna copy the example over here. Don't need to copy, it's quite easy, deploy. And then we need to specify what parameters. Let's go to the constructor and check. We need the pool address and the token address. These are the two parameters we need to specify upon deployment. So we're gonna do this dot pool and dot address and this dot token dot address. Now we have all the necessary information and the contract is deployed. We need to make sure that there is a wait over here. Here we don't need a wait because it's not an async function. But now that the contract is deployed, we can just do a wait attacker contract dot attack. That's it. We don't need to specify any parameters because we gave all the parameters already in the constructor and eventually the condition supposed to work. So now let's, it's time to check it out. All right, guys, so I had a bug. I wrote here uint instead of uint256. I know it's the same in Solidity, but it's very important that you specify the exact parameter that the function gets. So the approval function of the ERC20 is gets address and unsigned in 256. So now I fix this bug, and if we are gonna execute the test, let's see what happens. So yarn truster. Perfect, the test was success, the exploit worked and we stole all the tokens, right? So the smart contract was deployed and everything was as unexpected and all the tests were passed. So it's quite simple. I hope you guys learned something new today and this tutorial helped you. If you enjoy it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more smart contract auditing and hacking tutorials and content. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer all your questions. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next tutorials. Bye-bye.